Hello, welcome to Bar Free. We will start a new module this week and we will talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We will first start to talk about uh, photosynthesis. Um, today we will talk about uh, autotrophs. Oh, sorry, what are autotrophs? And also we will talk about um, the structures of leaves and chloroplast. And then in the next lecture, we'll talk about the first half of the photosynthesis, namely the light reaction. And, uh, and then the third lecture, we'll talk about uh, the, the second half of the photosynthesis, which is the dark reaction, or, or also known as the Kelvin cycle. So, what is photosynthesis? Any idea? We all we have we all we well theoretically we should have all heard about photosynthesis when we are in a high school or even elementary school. So, what is that? So, photo photo means light. Synthesis, of course, means create. Put together. So what photosynthesis together means that using light to create. Then what does photosynthesis create? Does anyone know? Well, I'll give you five seconds to think about this. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, time's up. Photosynthesis uses light to create glucose or food, you know, glucose, sugar which is the major food or staple food for all living organisms. To create, we use only to create new molecule using light energy to convert light energy into chemical energy. So the new molecule here And the chemical energy here they all refer to glucose. Um, the new molecule is glucose over chemical energy. Chemical energy is that as I mentioned before, the covalent bond in glucose, the covalent bond they generally stores energy and then uh, glucose has a lot of uh, covalent bond. So um, when animals eat glucose, then um, the glucose will go through a cellular respiration that we'll talk about in the next module. And then um, a living organism will use glucose or the energy stored in the covalent bond uh, to uh, make ATP. So which organism use uh, photosynthesis? Well, vascular plant, vascular plant, algae, cyanobacteria, and a coral. And we also have some protist. So this is the protist that they can, they have coral plus, they can use, uh, they can also do uh, photosynthesis. Vascular plant, vascular plant means uh, regular, tree or flower you know a tree the trees or grass that we see every day cyanobacteria um some nowadays people call them a blue green algae blue green algae they they are they also have coral plants of course cor coral coral reefs last one coral reefs they also do a photosynthesis. As a matter of fact, okay, we I, I assume okay most of us know the basics about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis uh, generate oxygen. That's why plants are so important. But believe it or not, majority of the photosynthesis uh, is not done on Earth. It is done in the ocean, in the sea. 
majority of the photosynthesis is done in the sea, in the ocean. Because you have uh, algae, cyanobacteria, and a lot of coral reefs um, in the ocean. So um, majority of the uh, photosynthesis is done in the ocean. In other words, majority of the oxygen is produced by the ocean. So please stop contaminating the ocean. Please stop polluting the o ocean. Because if we pollute the ocean, if we kill the ocean, then we will follow. We will die after the ocean die because we don't get we will not get enough oxygen. So which organism uses uh, photosynthesis? We already talked about we already talked about them. Cyanobacteria, aka blue green algae, uh, plant like protista, which is the uh, central picture that in the from the last slide, diatoms, dianoflagellate, euglena, euglena, algae, water plants, and then green plants, and a coral, coral reef. They should uh, include coral reef. So um, what are the autotrophs? What's the definition of it? The definition is that, okay, auto means self, trough means feeder or nourishment. Autotrophs are the um, living organisms or animals. Well, living organisms are the living organisms that can produce their own food. We call them autotroph. So let's put coral here. And then uh, it is the living organism produce their own food. Um, oh well, uh, there's no way I can fit in. Well, living organism. Well, let's put it here. So living organism produce their own food. Usually, um, in order for living organism to produce their own food, they need chloroplast um, because uh, only only uh, photosynthesis is the is the um, process that can produce uh, uh, food. So for autotroph, they produce around 170 billion metric tons of the carbohydrate. Yes, carbohydrate, the sugar, the glucose, you know, it's a lot of sugar to support, you know, almost all living organisms in the world. We have primary producer, primary producer. Um, they are not the producer you, 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 you uh, they are not the producer who make the movie or TV shows. Primary producer, they're autotroph. Yes, they support not only themselves, but all the consumers um, must take the preformed organic molecule. Uh, preform, the preformed organic molecules are the glucose, basically. Uh, primary producer, they are like the one that we talked about in the previous slides, um, the uh, vascular plant, uh, uh, um, diet, uh, the protester, the, the, the algae, you know, so on. They, they produce food to feed themselves, but they also let the consumer to eat them. What are the consumers? Um, they are the heterotroph. Hetero means uh, different.
trough, we already said that it means feeding. So these kind of consumer they feed on different uh, different organism. They feed on different organisms. So heterotroph is like the uh, opposite of autotroph. Autotroph they uh, produce their own food. They produce food by themselves. Heterotroph they feed on others. They feed on others. They feed on others. And we'll talk about trophic level um, later. Okay, trophic level. Usually the first trophic level, they are the producers. And all the producers, they are autotrophs. And then whatever the fit on the auto uh, autotroph whatever the fit on the uh, producer we call them primary consumers primary consumers they are usually uh, herbivore herbivore you know that they are the animal that eat plants only and then the secondary consumer that fit on the primary consumer they are usually carnivore but sometimes they are omnivore omnivore meaning that they are animals that can eat both plants and uh, meat, just like human being. And then you have tertiary consumers. They are mostly carnivore, but of course they also they may also have uh, omnivore there. And then on the fifth trophic level, you have the quaternary consumer. They are also mostly carnivore, but of course they are exception. They can be omnivore as well. But the um, basic idea is that. As soon as, uh, I would say, as, uh, starting from the second trophic level, starting from tro second trophic level, they are all called heterotrophs. So this is what we mean trophic level. For the um, autotroph, we have photosynthetic organism. That means organism that do photosynthesis majority of the autotroph they are photosynthetic but we have a few minority they call it ke uh, chemotroph chemotroph or chemotrophic organism uh, no we don't call it chemotroph chemotrophic chemotrophic organism So chemotrophic organism. So auto uh, photo photosynthetic organism, or they, we simply call it phototrophs. They use light um, as the energy source. We call it phototrophs. Whereas the uh, chemotroph uses electron donor as the source of energy, uh, whether it is from organic or inorganic sources. We will briefly talk about uh, chemotroph later. So um, uh, don't no need to worry about the definition right now. Electron donor, you know, organic inorganic sources, you know. So um, you will briefly talk about chemotroph, but we will focus mainly on the phototroph. Okay, chemotroph. They do, they do not require light. No light is needed. So most are bacteria or archaea. Archaea, um, I may or may not have talked about archaea. Archaea, they are some, well, we may call primitive uh, unicellular organism. They live in uh, extreme environment, like they live in lava, they live in hot spring. Um, usually those extreme environment um, inhibit the growth of any living organism, but these uh, archaea somehow they are uh, they love living there. See a hostile environment, like deep sea vents, hot spring, volcanic uh, 
fumaroles and geysers. So they use electron donors from the extreme environment to fix to fix carbon into carbo carbohydrate. So electron donors, they are the molecules that are highly that has that has a high energy content. Let's put it this way. Um, the electron donor, they are the molecule that carry something called a uh, high energy electron. Electron donors, they are the molecule that carry high energy electron. In the um, cellular respiration, we'll, we'll mention some of the uh, electron donor. And then fixate carbon into carbon dioxide. Most of the carbon source, they are from maybe if it is not in the deep sea ocean or uh, maybe from co2 carbon dioxide if if they are exposed to the air then they can get it from carbon dioxide or car other carbon sources may be uh, that that animals that that animal well that that organism So deep sea vent, geyser, and volcanic uh, fumaroles, fumaroles. So these are the um, where Archaea lives. Example of chemotrophs. Um, you have sulfur oxidizing bacteria. They live in seawater and see how totally decay organic material or dead organisms. So they will um, oxidize or convert these molecules into uh, carbohydrate methane oxidizing bacteria methane C CH4 methane oxidizing bacteria um, you may find you may find them into the um, feces of an uh, animal like cows cow dung and uh, iron oxidizing bacteria also in the deep sea see lava you can find uh, archaea in lava and then uh, hydrothermal activity and so on because um, deep sea or lava all these they are uh, mineral rich when they have a mineral then you have iron then the bacteria feeds on iron Okay, photosynthesis, which is our main dish. Photosynthesis convert a solar energy into chemical energy. As I mentioned before, the so-called chemical energy we mentioned here, they are the glucose or the covalent bond in the glucose. So, um, so all these some that carry out photosynthesis are called autotroph. Okay, that's very simple. Heterotroph, you know, other animal, other organism that fit on other organism. I briefly talked about the definition of heterotroph. Hetero means different. Troph means feeding. So they they feed on others. Both autotroph and this is a good point actually. This is a good point. Both autotroph and Heterotroph uses organic molecule produced by photosynthesis. Again, the organic molecule is the glucose or the sugar molecule. Now, let's just put it sugar, more general. Yes, plant also needs sugar to, to, to sustain the life. And uh, we also, of course, we also need sugar uh, to produce ATP. Plant also uses sugar to produce ATP. Pigment. Well, the reason why all leaves is are green because they have pigment. They allow photosynthesis to capture solar energy. Um, we'll talk about the pigment when we go to the uh, structure of chloroplast.
Okay, 